All right, well, we here at Muscle and Fitness Magazine understand that you're also a trainer. You work with a lot of clients. What is a training session with the great C.T. Fletcher like? I call it hell. And, and, and most people who do it call it a torture session. But, I, you know, if, when we're training, when we're training, I have flashbacks of how my dad taught me. You know, I hated that motherfucker. I didn't want him to come home from work. I used to pray to God to kill this motherfucker. Let a bowler fall on him or something. I'm going to clip any fucking thing. I didn't want him to come home. But one thing that old motherfucker right taught here, me right is he didn't give me no excuses. He didn't give me no choices. And that's the way I train my people. You don't have no motherfucking excuse. You don't have no choice. If you sign your fucking name on the line to train with me, your ass signed up for some torture. You knew what you was getting into. If you didn't want to do it, you shouldn't have brought your ass over. Alright, we're sitting with C.T. Fletcher. We're going to be taking questions from the crowd, so get your questions ready. C.T., what's your diet like today? My diet right there, my diet is much, as anybody who ever known me by me know when I was a power lifter, I ate any and every fucking thing that wasn't nailed down, especially double cheese, brother. I had four Big Macs every fucking day, four orders of fries, four apple pies, and two fucking strawberry shakes. They knew at McDonald's, I went in that motherfucker so much, they knew what I was going to eat before I got there. They started cooking the shit and they had it ready for me when I got here. All right, we're going to start with some questions from the audience. Doug Hall. Where you get this big motherfucker? I know, right? What's up, man? So as far as, um, when, when did you first get in the gym? What, what drew you into lifting weights? Uh, you know, just being inspired to be like, man, you know what, that's what I want to do. That looks great. I'm, I'm all for this. I'm, I'm going in this direction. That's all there is to it. Did everybody hear what his question was? Did everybody hear? Okay, he asked me what inspired me to start lifting weights. Have anybody here heard of Junior Miles? Who said Junior Miles? Junior Miles is my cousin. What did Junior Miles say? Junior Miles said, everybody! Back. 
Hey team, my name is Clinton from Texas, and I want to know which one of these motherfuckers is coming in second. Which one of you motherfuckers is coming in second? Because all you motherfuckers know who gonna win this shit, don't they? So have you ever worked with somebody that's stronger than you? Have I ever worked with somebody that's stronger worked than you? Worked out with somebody that's stronger than you? Oh, nowadays, yes, there's a lot of people strong. Probably half this fucking audience is probably stronger than me. <laughs> but there was a time. There was a motherfucking time when I was a king of the motherfucking beast. <laughs> but not now. There's a whole lot of beasts better than me. How big are your biceps? How do I know? They're 21 inches right now. 21. Not 22. Why don't you show me your bicep? Oh! 54. So yesterday you got a chance to spend some time with the legendary Billy Blanks, the creator of Tybo. You two have a lot in common. A lot of people don't realize you have a fighting background. Do you want to fill us in on that? Last time I seen Billy Blanks, he was the middleweight champion of the world. We were fighting the same tournament, Long Beach International Karate Championships. And I had to fight like four people to get to fight Billy Blanks because he was the champion. After I seen Billy Blanks, well, I, I made it through two of the motherfuckers. And the third motherfucker got my, whooped my ass. So I didn't get a chance to fight Billy Blanks. And when I seen Billy Blanks fight, God damn, I was glad I didn't get a chance to fight Billy Blanks. Now, do you train women and men in the same way? Same motherfucking way. If you don't want to get trained that way, then don't bring your ass into my session. Women get the same treatment. And you know what? They like it, Eric. They, they ask me to treat them the same way. The, some of the women train, out train these men to put them in the shame. A lot of big motherfucking men come in there crying and shit. And the women, they hey, give it to me, CZ. Taking some more questions from the audience for C.T. Fletcher. I'm going to pass the mic back. C.T., if you ain't a gym rat, then what are you? You're a motherfucking pacifier sucking pussy. Woo! Woo -hoo! You already know that, man. All right. Oh, Travis Brown, UFC fighter. It's great to see you. You know what I'm saying? It's, that's like life in general. So, thank you, sir. Hey, yo, hey, hey, hey. Did you guys see him back and forth down the <laughs> Hey, this is one bad motherfucker right here. If you haven't seen him fight, make sure you don't miss it. This motherfucker knocked the motherfucker out on the way to the fight. <laughs> he accidentally knocked the motherfuckers out. He in the jungle just slapping wild zebras and kangaroos. Tell the muscle and fitness readers about your last fight and how CT ins inspires you to train. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, like I just kind of said, um, I was introduced to CT through YouTube by my buddy Pat Berry, and you know, it's uh, it's one of those things that you can translate so much into people that are inspirational in every different aspect of your life. It doesn't matter what, if it's sports, it doesn't matter if it's reading a book or anything like that. Um, you know, when you find something that, that has heart and, and determination and that's willing to teach people about it and put in their own words, um, you know, that's something that will touch a certain individual. So for me, it was, you know, at the end of the day, maybe even like weightlifters. 
coaches and, and, and you know competitors and stuff like that. At the end of the day, you're going to be up in front of people and you're going to be judged on the way that you look. So putting in the work, putting in the work beforehand and knowing that you cannot let that rep own you. You have to own that rep. And that's for everything in the fight game and lifting weights because at one point, everything will come down to that one point. For me, it's three five minute rounds. And I have a dude standing in front of me and he's trying to hurt me. You know what I'm saying? So everything that I do leading up to my camp gives me the, the mental capacity to be able to deal with that and understand that I've done everything that I can do in my power to be successful today. So yeah, it's amazing. Mental capacity. It's all I'll mental. Trying, all I'll mental. be trying to tell you motherfuckers how important this shit is. You don't be listening to me. All you want to do is talk about how shiny my beard is and how I'm doing fucking half reps and shit. This shit. You he, crazy. Told, he, he told himself that he was going to whoop some ass. And guess what? He whooped some ass. Oh, <laughs> 
On behalf of Muscle Fitness Magazine, I'm Eric the Trainer. Thank you. Thank you.